slip the lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Divine greetings. We thank God for Elation Magazine and the opportunity to podcast every Thursday, 5 o'clock Central, the Loretta Petite Show, Women Winning at Life for Ministry to Marketplace. Look for Loretta Petite on Facebook so you can get information about our official prayer line. We'd like you to join us. Thanks again, Elation Magazine.
It's your destiny coach, Clarita Hatton Jackson, with Blue Flame Moments Radio Show. I want you to make sure you tune in right here to Election Radio with Kimmy Kim to hear my show, Blue Flame Moments Radio Show. You can learn more about me at Clarita Music on all social media and tune in to Election Radio with Kimmy Kim. All right, you guys. Well, I want to apologize to my wonderful producer. I was talking on mute. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, one. Good evening, all. Praise the Lord for you and for you and for you. Um, I took a time to uh, send out my invitations to people who may want to catch the podcast. Uh, Time caught up with me because life happens. And if you're like me, you're like an octopus sometimes. But I thank God for the ability and for the opportunity. Ability meets opportunity. Opportunity meets ability. Praise the name of the Lord. And even with all things that God has already done, is doing, and have uh, promised to do, I still count not myself to have apprehended. For this one thing I do, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So, I'm grateful, indeed I am, and I know I can't rest on my leaves, as the Bible says. That means I can't just chill out on what I've already accomplished, but I've got to continue to press because there's so much work to be done. The harvest is ripe, the laborers. That's us. Sometimes we can be few. So uh, I'm grateful today to be here with you, and I give God the praise. My name is Loretta Petit. This is the Loretta Petit Show, Women Winning at Life. From ministry to marketplace, and I praise God for you. I thank God for uh, my wonderful producer, Miss Kimmy Kim. Uh, she's an octopus too. She's doing a whole lot of things. I'm not there with her side by side, but I already know. I mean, because I pay close attention. And also, I just want to um, thank God for her being such a beautiful spirit of light. And to Mr. Jerry Royce, thank you, sir, too. For all you do, we are so grateful for being a part of the family. Uh, So on today, I know uh, we've already talked about a couple of things as we are winning women, and we want to continue to win at life. Life comes at us from the left, the right, above, beneath, around. It just comes at us. And in order for us to stay on top of our game, uh, we are going to have to be vigilant. The Bible says to watch fight and pray. We've got to be vigilant. We've got to understand what's happening. Now, the the, the, the error in that sometimes is that sometimes uh, women can tend to read, I don't want to say women, let's just say people, tend to read too much into a situation. Sometimes I get read so deeply and people just keep reading and they're reading all kinds of wrong things. I'm like, no, that's not what I meant. No, that's not where I'm coming from. That's not what I said. But We want to always um, raise it up to God and say, Lord, help me to see this clearly. Because, you know, you can uh, assess too quickly. I know people who I've looked up to, but in the interim of things, when they are looking at things, sometimes they just sum it up and they just feel that they're right and they are dead wrong. You cannot always assume, you know, you cannot conclude this is what's happening here. It's going to take a prayerful eye, and you're going to have to lift that thing up to the Lord. You're going to have to lift that up to God to make sure you see what you see. But be vigilant, and if it doesn't um, feel good to your spirit, uh, that's prayer time. You know, that's spiritual warfare time to pray against such things that try to come after you, that tries to take over your believability, that tries to saturate your home or to set up on you. You cannot always assume, but if it doesn't feel good to your spirit, that's an indication to pray, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Amen. And that's uh, very, very important, very key. So let's not uh, read something that's not there about an individual. Oh, that person's a troublemaker. And label people. That's not cool. Um, Oh, that person is always, you know, trying to get over. That's not cool. I mean, you know when you know, but... When you don't know, don't suppose. You know, give people the benefit of the doubt. I like what I just heard 
on Judge Mathis' uh, show. He said, live your faith. There was a woman who just helped and gave and helped and gave. Now, she took care of her business side. She wrote promissory notes and what have you, but she gave because she saw someone in need, and she helped, but she gave promissory notes, right? So he said, you are a woman that lives your faith. Now, Judge Mathis makes all kind of cracks about the church and about people because he sees so much people coming in there professing Jesus but doing everything but what's light. You know, they're doing darkness and they're professing Jesus. So, of course, he makes these little wisecracks. But this woman, she was living her faith, and I had to agree with him. She was living her faith. So, um, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there for free, as they say. Be careful um, of what you're dealing with, what's around you, and if it doesn't agree with your spirit, that's the time to go into spiritual warfare. And that's all I want to say on that. So we talked about being uh, winners. Winners uh, always want to talk about being winners. I'm so excited. I went and bought a bathroom rug today, and it just simply says, hello, beautiful. So when I go in there, I'm going to see that every day. I'm about positive messages. I'm about uh, sending out positive vibes. And so when my spirit is quenched and when my vibe has been cut, um, when I don't feel that life that is coming from a certain situation or people, then I try to distance myself because I'm about positivity, I'm about positive vibes, I'm about positive words, uh, positive reinforcement, and that's what I'm about. And when that's not happening for me, I I can tend to get really, really, really sad about it. If I'm sad about something, then my thing is I've got to change it. I've got to change it. If it's something I feel I need to change and I'm not really sure if God is saying change it, or tunnel through this one, you know, I'm I'm in prayer about it. I'm constantly in prayer about it because sometimes I feel to believe based on uh, the principles of God's word that he strategically placed us in situations where it's not about us, but it's about somebody else. So we're there uh, for his strategy to take place so that souls could be saved, right? So that the backslider can come out of his, his entrapment, come out of his bondage. And even then, God will reinforce your spirit. So um, when you're in a situation, when you feel that the life has been sucked out of you, then that could be uh, an opportunity now for you to change things. And the same for me. I'm about light and I'm about positivity. I'm about God's will. Um, And Jesus went into some situations that were very, very dark, Um, but he brought the light. And that's what we've got to do sometimes to bring the light. So we've got to know the difference, when to stay the course and be the light and bring the light, or when it's time for us to move out of that space because it is sucking the life right out of us, right? So that's an opportunity for us to pray as well. So I talked about in a couple of uh, pods before about winning through effective communication. And I've talked about in depth, really, about procrastination and some of the things it can halt in our lives if we are not on point. Now, I am not the earliest person to show up somewhere. I am not the earliest person, but guess what? I used to be. I used to be, especially in church circles, I used to be the early bird. And so what stopped that for me was the fact that many of the church services were not starting on time. And that discouraged me. So if the church service was scheduled to start for 10, I would show up at 945 because I wanted to get the seat I wanted and I wanted to fellowship before service started. And then the churches that I was going to that were scheduled to start at 10, they will start at 1010, they will start at 1015, they will start at 1030. So I started getting discouraged. I found out that many of the places were waiting for the crowd, quote unquote, to show up before they would start church service. And that discouraged me. And it must have really done a job on me because I had to fight now not to be late places. I've got to fight. I'm still fighting, um, but I'm doing so much better. I'm not on time to everything, but everything um, that I, you know, I think is very, very important, I push to be on time. But then there are other factors to factor in. We're not going to get into procrastination again, except to say we have to 
give ourselves travel time. We've got to give ourselves time in case there's an accident on the highway, uh, in case there is a street blockage. So all those things go into it, okay? So to be successful um, at being somewhere where you've got to be, uh, factor those things in. Uh, Today I want to talk a little bit about focusing on commitment. Many times we're focusing on the motivation behind the commitment, but if you can commit to something, if you can commit to something, uh, it is believed that the motivation is going to show up if you have determined within yourself that you're going to commit to a thing. So before I talk about that, let me give you some contact information. It is my pleasure to communicate with you. Uh, If you've sent me an email and I haven't responded, I deleted my email from my phone uh, because it was not um, it was not updating. It was not updating, and so I'm going to put it back on the phone and see if it starts to update. Uh, um, I went to uh, my laptop and I started deleting some old, old, old emails so that I'll have more space in case that was the problem. But it's not updating. So if you're waiting for a response from me, please be patient with me. It's coming. I'm going to have to reload it on my phone and prayerfully my emails will update. Um, So that is the situation. But you can send your email to me, LorettaReviews at gmail.com. That's LorettaReviews at gmail.com. You can also access me on social media. On Twitter, I'm Preach Girl, one word, Preach Girl. On Facebook, simply Loretta Petit. uh, That is P-E-T-I-T. And on uh, Instagram, you can look for I am Loretta Petit. Look for I am Loretta Petit. I love, love, love to be in contact with you. Well, here in the Crescent City, where I am uh, emanating this pod from, uh, we are in Mardi Gras season. And the Mardi Gras is going to be Tuesday. We call it Fat Tuesday. And that Monday is going to be uh, Lundi Gras. Uh, you know, just other times for celebration and partying. I live in a party city. Um, You know, Las Vegas don't have anything on us, (laughs) except, of course, that they've got more money. And, uh, you know, they make their buildings bigger with more lights. But everything in New Orleans is a party or calls for a party. And uh, we have been dubbed the Big Easy for some of that purpose. But anyway, we're in the Mardi Gras season where there are lots of parades and lots of lights and lots of street theatrics and all of that. Well, street theatrics uh, all year round, but even more so now. Um, So if you are planning a trip here and you don't want all of that revelry, just wait until after Tuesday and all will be well. And if you like that kind of thing, you need to get here before Tuesday. How about that? Also, we want to acknowledge in the month of February is Healthy Heart Month. So, ladies, you know, that's one of the biggest killers, uh, silent killers for us, and that is heart disease. So be sure that you are taking care of your heart. Uh, Eat your oatmeal and watch your triglycerides, not too much fatty things, into your system. Um, And we've got to watch our weight, not too much pressure on the heart, and things of that nature. It is also Black History Month. And I salute all those um, shoulders on whom we stand, doors that they swung open. Some swung those doors open with jail time, with injuries, and some even with their lives. And I, for one, am grateful, uh, happy um, Black History Month to all of you and to all of those who were friends to the African Americans who helped us along the way. Uh, God put it in their hearts and their spirit, and I am grateful So um, even though it's our month of celebration, it's not a month of hate saying if you don't look my, if you don't look like me, if you're not my color, then, you know, we're hating. It's not about hating. It's just about uh, celebrating the fact that we as a people have pushed through. Uh, We have come to where we are today, but the fight is not over. We've got to continue to fight. We've got to continue to push until we can see uh, equality straight across the board. Uh, There's a wonderful quote that Dr. Martin Luther King, um, he gave, I want to reference it, but I know I'm going to screw it up. But to some degree, he said that an injustice anywhere is an injustice um, 
like something like everywhere or something to that effect. Uh, I'm going to see, can I find it before I get out of here? But he was saying that we've got to still fight. In other words, we cannot rest on our leaves, on our laurels. We cannot rest and think that the fight is over because we have won our own little battle. Okay. All righty then. So let's get back now to uh, what we're talking about here. We're talking about commitment. Commitment is very, very important if we're going to do a thing to be committed to a thing. Um, Many times we don't want to commit. We know people that don't want to commit, um, and they want to do it, and they want to be free enough and to pop in and to pop out. But commitment is very, very important to the things that we do. Now, I'm the founder of a women's sisterhood, uh, a sisterhood. Why would I say women's sisterhood? That's double. A sisterhood. I'm a founder of a sisterhood. And it's very, very, very important to me that the ladies of the sisterhood commit. Uh, It's very important to me. I pal around with each of them. I love them. You know, I try and be there for them. They're there for me. Um, But a commitment is what's necessary. Now, even though I'm asking for commitment, I'm not saying, you know, you need to check in with me every day of the week or every week of the uh, month or every month of the year. That's not what I'm saying. But if you're committed, you're going to care about what we do. Uh, When there is responsibility on their part, they're going to grab that responsibility and handle it. If they can't physically show up, they will be able to trade it off to someone who can show up on their behalf. Commitment is commitment. Commitment means that I've got your back for real. Commitment means I'm here. Commitment, commitment means you can count on me. That's what commitment means. And many times people are afraid to commit. Why? Why are we, we afraid to commit? The only way we can win anything in life, we've got to commit to winning. We've got to commit to winning. What does winning take for you? It may take something different for me, but whatever it takes, we've got to commit to that. We've got to commit to winning. Um, and it may take more time than what you want it to take. But if you're committed, that means you're going to go back to it. You're going to keep on trying. You're going to keep asking, seeking, knocking, because you're committed. And um, just like with a man and a woman, the man might want to live together. And sometimes in this day and time, women just want to live together. But God said that marriage is honorable. But sometimes we found in the past men didn't want to commit. They didn't want to commit. They wanted to have their cake and eat it too. One woman's name was Cake, and the other woman's name was Edith. He wanted his cake and Edith, too. So um, that was just a little jocularity right there. But he wanted, you know, to live single, and he wanted to live married. On some days and some people, he wanted to be single. And with that one person, he wanted to be married. But you cannot have success when you're not committed. You've got to be committed, whether it's in business whether it's in sisterhood, whether it's in marriage or any other thing, ministry, you've got to be what? Committed. So I want to encourage you to win at life. It's going to take some commitment on your part. If you're in bad relations with your family, it's going to take some commitment to turn that thing around. You can't just say, okay, well, I'm going to try it today, but if you don't get it today, then that's it. That's not commitment. Commitment means I'm going to try it today, and if I fail today, I'm going to go back to my prayer room, and I'm going to come at him or her another kind of way. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to go and seek God again, and then I'm going to go and try again. I'm going to pray for their heart to be receptive. You're going to be committed. I find in 2020, 2019 to 2020, people are just not trying to be committed. they are rather give you an excuse and go another way. That is awful. That is awful. And we wonder why things are not changing in our lives. We wonder why we cannot get to our next place. We wonder why we cannot have true friends. We wonder why, you know, things seem upside down for us because we run away rather than stay and commit. So I want to encourage you to be focused on commitment. Can you? Will you? Be focused on commitment. Stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. 
even with some of your goals at the beginning of the year, you made resolutions to stop doing this or to lose that or to exercise here or to think positively there. And then within a matter of days or weeks, you stopped doing it. Why is it so hard to commit? Why is it so hard to commit? I want to encourage you to think about that and to try and turn things around by giving yourself 15 minutes a day to work on that thing that you feel or you know you should be committed to. Start with 15 minutes a day. Are you trying to be committed to worshiping God in the morning first thing? Are you trying to be committed to reading your Bible first thing in the morning? Are you trying to be committed to being more pleasant? Are you trying to be committed to smiling more? Are you trying to be committed to showing up on time or just simply showing up when you're supposed to show up? Give yourself 15 minutes a day to focus on making that change happen. Say, okay, I got to be at such and such place. Let me focus on how I can get everything else in my day centered around where I've got to be, this place that I haven't been committed to, that I need to be committed to. Work on that. Work on that. Be honest with yourself about what's in your way and try and get it out of your way. And, of course, if you commit, you will start to see a difference because you will start to see some things yielding from your being commitment, the things you never saw before. You'll probably start to see now because you're there more, because you're present, because your whole self is in that one place. Instead of you being there and your mind is somewhere else, no, your whole self, It's coming into this one place, and you'll be able to get more out of it when you become more committed to it. And then the next thing I want to encourage you to do is to seek knowledge. Seek knowledge. This is how we win at life. Learn, learn, and learn. Be a student, a lifelong student. Always be willing to learn. Listen to what other people have to say. You don't always have to be the brightest star in the galaxy. Let other people share their knowledge. Let other people share their experience. Sometimes people go on and on and on and on and on, and you can't get a word in because they're telling you all that they know. Hey, listen, here's a tip. You don't have to tell all you know in one conversation, but be sure in that conversation that you know all you tell. So in other words, for you know what you're talking about, be sure that you know what you're talking about rather than just talking. And in that conversation, you don't have to tell a person everything you know, everything you know. My God, give people an opportunity to converse back with you. You say a little, let them say a little. You say a little, let them say a little. Be open to knowledge. Always seek knowledge. Find out what you can find out today. Find out what you can get to know today. Seek knowledge. Okay, seek knowledge. You can learn from anyone. You can learn from a child. You can learn from someone who's really mean and grumpy. You can learn from someone who's always quiet, paying attention to what they do. Remember, it is important for us To live this life, we want to live it victoriously. We want to live it harmoniously. We want to be able to get knowledge and to win, be on top. So learn, learn, learn. Focus on commitment and seek knowledge, and you will continue to be a woman that's winning at life. Hey, friends, don't forget to reach out to me, LorettaReviews at gmail.com. I want to give a shout-out to Ms. Kimmy Kim as well as Mr. Jerry Royce. Kimmy, thank you so much for all you do, honey. Not for one moment. Don't you ever think that I am not grateful to you, because I am. And I love you with the love of the Lord. And to all my coffee sisters, I want to give a shout-out to you. Thank you for believing in me and my vision and coming to the table to help other sisters with your love and your knowledge and what you bring to the table as we bond and become stronger as one and make an impact in our community. And also want to invite you all to our Monday night prayer call. It is um, 
the official prayer call of the Coffee Sisterhood Network. It is the official prayer call of Elation Magazine. So please, ma'am, please, sir, you're welcome to to log in at 302-202-1119. You writing it down? Here you go again, 302-202-1119. The code to enter is 781-350. Once again, happy Black History Month to you. Happy Black History Month to you. Learn something about your history and pass it on by social media, by word of mouth, by sending someone a text or an email, pass it on. Let's keep our history alive in somebody's heart and somebody's life because it may be the spinoff into a glorious, a wonderful, a winning future for somebody else. By knowing where we've been, it can help them to maybe get a clearer view of where they're going. My name is Loretta Petit, and I'm winning at life. Till next time, bye-bye. He makes me